With that being said, let's get into the uh, discussion here. A discussion I am excited to have. <laughs> Maybe because I'm a bit of a kook, so it, it interests me. But um, like Nikki said in the open there, we do want to discuss time. And not from sort of this... Maybe it is metaphysical, I guess, if you're just talking about the supernatural, but not really from a scientific perspective so much, but from an experience perspective. Uh, like I said, this is a topic that I'm interested in, and I'm glad that we kind of came across a story that allowed us the opportunity to dive in and discuss this topic, which, you know, is, I guess, a bit off the beaten path of normal, I guess, Christian discussion. But do you want to go ahead and read this headline, honey? Do you feel time going faster? It says, everywhere I go, I find people commenting. I can't believe how time is flying. Life seems to be going by so fast. They tell me, days and months seem to be zipping by, almost in a blur. The older we get, the quicker time seems to pass. Why is that? When we were five, it seemed like an eternity as we eagerly counted days until Christmas. That represented about 20% of our life. When we're 50, it represents about 2%. Hence, the gap shortens and everything seems to come quicker with the pace ever quickening. Yep. So time getting quicker. Mm -hmm. And this is a topic that I heard discussed really for the first time, maybe a decade ago. You know, the idea that time seems to be um, going quicker was kind of the discussion that they had. And uh, I think at that time, you know, they referenced that, you know, it's biblical. That's something that we should expect is that time would move quicker. And I never heard that before. I was like, that's odd. So are we talking about like, it seems it's moving faster or people are actually saying time is faster? Right. So they're saying it seems like it's moving faster because it's moving faster. Um, and that is, we would expect that it would continue to move faster. And, you know, now... We get older, right? And as this article kind of mentioned, every day does become less of the whole of our life. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're one day old, that day is 100% of your life. So, you know, that's all the time, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're 100 years old, that one day, and I can't do public math here, but it makes up a whole lot less than 100%, right? So um, the days and the hours, they just continue to make up less and less of, you know, of your life as we grow older. And I think every adult that's ever lived, Nikki and I included, right? We've all said, you know, where is the time gone? It's just flying by. I can't believe it's already. I know we had our 20 year high school reunion. <laughs> yeah. And I still feel like a 19 year old. Nikki probably thinks I'm still a 19 year old in many respects. Uh, but so, I mean, really the idea of life getting faster or feeling faster isn't necessarily a new phenomenon. Um, but is, I guess the reason why I wanted to talk about this is, is today just common to what every other person has experienced as they get older, or is it different? Uh, and I think one point that's worth mentioning that makes today unique from all of the time before it is technology. You know, it's almost like once technology and the internet um, came on the scene in a real way, like we're experiencing now, seems like time has accelerated and also at the same time that like time has stopped in some respects. Uh, Nikki showed me a video. It was on like a YouTube short or maybe TikTok. I can't remember, but it was this guy kind of talking about how weird it is that really fashion hasn't changed since 2003. And he was kind of making the point that like every other decade before this, there was like distinct lines between like, you know, you could very distinctly or very easily distinguish between like the 50s and the 60s, the mm -hmm. 60s and 70s, 70s, 80s, 80s, 90s, and 90s to the 2000s. But since the 2000s, it's like, everything's relatively the same. You know, he made the point of The mm -hmm. Office, the TV show. And he's like, it, the first season of The Office came out in 2003. And the people there in that office, they look exactly the same, dressed exactly the same. Is the people in 2023. Like, yeah, you could watch it today and not guess what year it was. Yeah, you outside think maybe of like that was the two years ago when it started. On the desk right. or something. Technology. Yeah, the screen yeah. sizes are smaller. Yeah. But even, you know, fashion has seemed to stop. Uh, music is largely, it's 
from my ears is much the same yeah. as it was Things in the Things are 2000s. repeating now in fashion and in music. So yeah. technology is unique to our time. Um, you know, everything mm -hmm. is online, uh, online now. Uh, it may be part of why it seems like things are going faster is because of technology. You know, modern tech has enabled us to do pretty much everything at lightning speed. You know, phones and the internet has really completely taken away any downtime that we might have. Mm -hmm. So there's really no longer such thing as boredom anymore. Right. Like if you're bored, you just grab your phone, grab your laptop, jump on a, you know, a video mm -hmm. game, whatever it happens to be. So we never really have the opportunity in today's society to just let time drag on. I mean, that's the idea of just being bored and mm -hmm. just letting time drag on seems incomprehensible to us anymore. So is it just a figment of our imagination that time is accelerating or is it actually accelerating? Yeah, the thing with the technology, it is idleness. Um, and I think time goes by quickly when you're doing something like that. Really, like if you're watching a movie, time goes by fast. If you're scrolling Facebook, you're like, how did I just waste an hour? I felt like 10 minutes. But this whole idea of idleness and time, I just want to chime in on my current convictions of being idle. Um, recently, I was reading Proverbs 31. And it says about the wife that she looks well to the way of her household and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Um, so this chapter is about keeping busy, doing the work the Lord has given you to do. Um, you have a home, husband and children. You, you cannot be idle and be looking after the ways of your household. Um, so being at home and doing these things isn't, that doesn't even, even work really. Um, it's a joy to cook and clean and teach your children. And, you know, sure, it can be stressful in some ways sometimes, but you are doing your work in your place of rest and you can take breaks anytime you want. Um, you're the boss and you can make it as pleasant or miserable <laughs> as you like. I mean, obviously it can be miserable without your wanting it to be. <laughs> yeah. um, but I am happiest when I am working in the home. I have joy when I can focus on my domain. Um, so with that being said, I have been convicted in being idle more than I should be. Um, and this doesn't mean it's wrong to take breaks and do reading or catching up with friends or, you know, talking to somebody on the phone, whatever. Um, it's that what Spencer mentioned, just like mindlessly wasting time on our screens. Um, it's just not beneficial. And we are the generation <laughs> that has wasted more time um, than, than any. And time is running out. Um, so this is a, it's important to discuss time. Um, a lot of people don't want to think about time because they don't want to think about eternity. Right. Um, yeah. So I think we are the generation that has wasted so much time. Um, and it's like Satan planned this. Uh, he knows that his time is short. So he devised um, to make us waste what precious little time we have left. Um, so the gospel won't go forth throughout the world and the Lord will not return soon. But of course, the Lord is going to return. God has determined that day. Nobody can stop that day. But nope. Satan always tries to thwart God's plans. So um, let's just see idleness as what it is. It is the bread. It is the bread of idleness. It's I was trying to research really what that meant. It's idleness, but it's the bread of idleness. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting phrase to use, you know, eat yeah. the bread of idleness, you know, because Christ, the bread of life. And, yeah, you know, I was trying to make a connection kind of, there. Yeah. So that, I don't know, I was just really convicted. In it, and I have been praying for conviction um, for whatever. Sometimes we're just blind to our sin. And I'm like, well, I know I'm not perfect. God, please show me. Not that I think I'm perfect, obviously. We all know. I'm like, God, show me what I need to work on now. What's of most importance? And it's the things I've been praying about, um, being better at homeschooling the kids. Because I said before, like, it doesn't come naturally to me. I don't, like, enjoy it. But this conviction about being idle um, really got to me. And it's kind of spurring me on to not be idle because I can... 
I can stay busy doing other things that are productive while ignoring the more important things. So I don't feel so guilty. And I'm sure other people do that too. Um, I know that about myself and I see it in my kids too. Like one of our kids will be busy doing something else. It's not a bad thing. It's something they should do. But I'm like, but not right now. You need to be focused on your schoolwork. And I'm like, they're just like me. <laughs> um, yeah. So the Holy Spirit, guys, as I was reading Proverbs 31, I was thinking how the Holy Spirit works through God's word, as he always does. Um, his word and the spirit together do the work um, like of conviction, because I was reading the word and then the conviction came. And I've read that before without conviction. So it's just an answer to prayer as I'm reading the word. It's so cool. Um, and then we respond by agreeing and going to the Father for help. And it's just like a beautiful realization. Jesus, the Word, the Holy Spirit, and God, like the Trinity still working together to sanctify us, not just in salvation, but in sanctification too. And it was just kind of neat. I was thinking about that today. I'm like, they all three work together <laughs> yeah. still, like just, I don't know. It's kind of neat. If you have anything, yeah, share like any story you have of, um, you know, a prayer and just finding the answer and conviction or encouragement, whatever it is from the word and how that was the answer to your prayer. God usually just uses his word to answer our prayer, to help us see the truth. Yeah. And I mean, it is an amazing, beautiful picture of the Trinity and even this idea of idleness and technology. I mean, it's certainly discussions need to be had. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. we're all guilty of that. And, mm -hmm. you know, even as we discuss this topic of time being short, it almost exacerbates how damaging the idleness, you know, and the, the time we waste really is. It is the a time gift. Time is getting shorter, yet we're wasting more of it. Yeah. It becomes exponentially worse. And, right. you know, we're convicted of that. I think we had a discussion at our Wednesday night church group about, mm -hmm. you know, really wasting time. And, you know, our lives are short as it mm -hmm. is, um, rather what we're talking about here, time shortening or not, our lives are short and mm -hmm. we spend so much of it, you know, obviously technology, social media, and all of this stuff is such a largely a waste of time. Um, but yeah, definitely something yeah. to consider in our I own think lives. Maybe God has us designed in such a way that we realize, um, time. Like as we get older, we see, wow, it's going so fast. You, know, you look at kids and you're like, how are you already grown up? You're, you know, almost the age we were when we got married. <laughs> like, And like God allowing us to like feel like time is going fast to get us to ponder eternity, to get us to think how short our lives are. So we will call upon him sooner <laughs> or just take our life seriously. It's a gift from him. And and take seriously his commands um, to spread the gospel, to mend relationships. Um, time is such a gift. It's such a mercy of God. Absolutely. But um, so, yeah, whether time is moving fast or not, faster or not, um, it is definitely something we need to ponder and take stock in. Um, but let's just continue on with this article here so we can get into this idea of, is time actually moving faster? Do you want to read this paragraph? Oh, uh, where are we at? Yeah, right here. Additionally, Scripture speaks of the acceleration in pace of living in Daniel, which is a prophetic book for the end times that Jesus cited. The last chapter alerts us to something interesting happening prior to his return. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And that was quoting Daniel 12, 4. Yep, Daniel 12, 4. And, you know, we would have to conclude, right, that this verse they reference is a verse that we see play out better in our time, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe than ever in human history. Um and kind of like we've been talking about with this idleness and technology, um, it's just simply because we're better able to um, to do this than anyone in history. Technology has allowed us to run to and fro, increasing in knowledge, mm -hmm. unlike any time in human history. Right. 
you know, so if Daniel is speaking of running to and fro as busyness, mm. you know, that's the idea. Then again, I feel we see this better today than ever before. Mm. And it's, you know, weird because technology somehow promises to make our lives easier, to simplify them. And while it may do that in some respect, it simultaneously leads us to fill our lives to the brim with more and more. Isn't it kind of funny how we want things to make our lives easier so we have more time? So we have more time, but we waste it. Yeah, it's like each <laughs> bit of technology simplifies and make thing, makes things easier. So we just add more simplified, easy things to fill in the gaps. So there's really no ever, no, no time ever made up. It's just, well, now you can do more, right? You can run to and fro faster and faster and do more. And, you know, all of these mm -hmm. simplified tasks, but they're running us ragged, it seems. Um, and I know it's running us ragged, again, which is why we're trying to fight to slow our lives down a little bit, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. stepping back from doing the daily devotionals that we had done and, you know, Nikki mm -hmm. stepping back from work and just trying to like slow it down a little bit, um, which is not easy in modern society for sure. But I actually had this kind of argument. It wasn't really an argument because it was with a friend, but kind of a disagreement about this last aspect. You know, he says we run to and fro and in increasing in knowledge. And I had this discussion about increasing in knowledge with a coworker and, and forgive my wording, but my point on it was that, um, while our knowledge may be increasing, somehow we might be the dumbest people in human history. And of course, he was pretty adamant that that was not true. And his reasoning was basically, um, we have the most college educated populace we've ever had, right? So how can we be dumb if we're the most college educated? And, and my argument was kind of because of that, like, and because of technology tying into it, that maybe because of technology, right? We have more knowledge, but we've lost any ability, it seems, or a large ability to actually know how to use that knowledge appropriately. We have all these people with all these degrees, but you know what we don't have anymore is like philosophers. like Yeah, philosophy's dead. Yeah. yeah, I mean, how many, you know, psychologists are running around with letters after their names that tell you, you know, your gender's fluid, yeah. uh, all this sort of stuff, right? Are we going to tell, are we going to, suggest that they're somehow wise and knowledgeable? Of course not. Um, and, you know, my kind of point was that we've lost critical thinking skills. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's basically because we don't have to critically think anymore. We have technology to critically think for us. And, you know, right on the cusp now of AI really getting implemented into the mainstream, I think this is only going to get worse. You know, why would we waste our time solving a problem when AI can solve it for mm -hmm. us in a minute, right? Again, we're going to simplify and then fill to the brim like with simplified we're things. We're so smart that we've created something. That makes us irrelevant. That Yeah. Like, is that a smart thing to do? If we're so smart, why would we do that? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty odd. Um, you know, but if we're looking for an application of Daniel 12.4, I think it's hard to say that we haven't found it in our day, you know, but as this article kind of touches on, and this article took me to a place that the article didn't go. You know, the article is kind of talking about this idea from Daniel, the quickening of the pace, running to and fro. Um, so the acceleration of pace is one thing. I think we certainly see that in our day. I, it'd be hard for me to believe that there's very many people that would disagree that our lives have gotten quicker as far as the pace that we're living them at. I don't know how many people would disagree with that. But the thing that this article got me to really start thinking about was just the loss of time. You know, as we kind of mentioned earlier, when we were starting this, time seems to be flying by and at least to some and this is what I heard a decade ago, some believe and you can go on YouTube and stuff and find videos and articles of people talking about this same thing. Um, Scripture seems to, at least in some people's eyes, speak about the idea of an actual quickening of time, not just a quickening of pace, but an actual quickening of time. Uh, so this comes from, and this is where my mind went when I read the article. So this article isn't necessarily as going as far as what we're talking about here. And I just want to make the point, this isn't me saying 
this is true or this is what I believe. Because, you know, even when you look online and YouTube and stuff, a lot of the mainstream Christian thinkers aren't going down this route of an actual quickening of time. Right. They don't go there. So it's more of a fringe topic. I get that. But I still think it's worth discussing because just because it's fringe doesn't mean it's not true. Um, and just because it's popular doesn't mean it is true, right? I mean, so it's worth discussing. And I just find it interesting. So deal with it, right? Uh, in love. But uh, let's read Matthew chapter 24, verse 22. Do you want to read that? Mm -hmm. Unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Yeah. So unless those days had been cut short, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Hmm. And I did look up a couple of commentaries on Matthew 22, um, just to see what the folks out there are saying about it. I and 24, 22. Yeah, what did I say? You just said 22. Oh, 24, 22. Uh, so the ESV mm. Study Bible, it states, some suggest this means that if God's wrath were to continue unchecked against the wickedness of humanity, no one would survive the eventual destruction. And others see uh, in this a reference to a cutting short of either the 70th week of Daniel 927 or the 42 months of Revelation 11, 12, or 11, 2. And then I looked up in John MacArthur's commentary, and he says, but for the elect's sake, so that redeemed people do not suffer more than they can bear, the time is shortened, i.e. held short of total destruction. So mm -hmm. their points of view, and which, again, I think is the mainstream common understanding, is a shortening of days in the idea of a number of days. Mm -hmm. God is going to cut short the number of days. Um and again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that they're wrong in their interpretation or anything of that sort, but just more of a, a question of, could it also be a shortening of the length of days? You know, could time in fact be moving faster? Again, we all feel like it's moving faster. Is it moving faster? And does the Bible suggest that it will move faster well, as time draws to an end? Notice it day by day. Because we have some days that drag on and other days just go fast. Does it just depend on how busy Right, we and are, I would assume how idle we are. <laughs> if it is accelerating now, you know, in a small way, I would assume if it were to accelerate dramatically when the Lord returns, we would probably notice that quite quickly, uh, or we would definitely have our eyes open to that. Um, but as far as this idea of Matthew twenty four twenty two. Um, that's obviously listed in the section of scripture where Jesus is um, giving the prophecy of the end times, what's going to happen in the end times. Mm -hmm. So he's speaking the end times and some take this prophecy and they see it partially fulfilled in AD 70, you know, with the destruction of the temple. And so they say some of this has already happened. Some is yet to come. Uh, and I think, for some of them, in just the commentaries I read, this is where they get the idea of the shortening of days. There are certain commentaries that talk about, well, that was during the destruction of the temple in AD 70. It was shortened or else everyone would have been destroyed. So, uh, you know, they kind of mentioned the siege was mm. shortened. And maybe that's true, right? Um, this is more, I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on this shortening of time, this cutting short of time. Um yeah. And, you know, I'm not sure. Obviously, I don't know enough about biblical history and prophecy as of yet to know if this was actually fulfilled in AD 70. Um, but what it does go on to say in Matthew 24, in the next verses, um, is that we will then see the Lord's coming like lightning in verse 28. And then in verse 29 and 30, it says... Uh, but immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the son of man will appear in the sky. Yeah. The sign of the son of man when we 
see him. Yeah, I mean, I would assume that's what it's saying, right? This is the end end. The mm -hmm. Lord is coming back. So again, while some of this might have been partially fulfilled in AD 70, it would seem that most of this, and especially the parts that we're reading here, following the shortening of the days, is speaking about the second coming of the Lord, not AD 70. Um, and if what Jesus says here is true, you know, that the sun will go dark, the moon won't shine, the stars are going to fall, you know, all of these supernatural signs are going to take place, does it seem like too far of a stretch, too big of a stretch, that God can't actually shorten days in the length of the day? You know, and we know that in the Bible, God has prolonged days. You know, in Joshua's time, he made the sun stand still. Uh, Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 through 13 speaks about God in making the, moon. the sun stand still. Yeah, he prolonged the length of days. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, again, keeping in mind that not all of this was fulfilled, um, this entire prophecy is prefaced by the question the disciples ask of Jesus. In Matthew 24, 3, um, the disciples ask, What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And that's when Jesus goes into this lengthy prophetic um, statement in Matthew 24. He's explaining to them, these are the signs. Mm -hmm. So, again, just something, again, I heard a discussion about. It's not very often, but... Is time going to be cut short in days? And I will just mention, again, most of the discussion around this seems to be centered around an actual rapture type of mm -hmm. theology. So maybe it's weird that we're even talking about it because we don't necessarily believe in a literal, a literal rapture. rapture. Yeah, secret yeah, rapture. Yeah, you will be raptured when Jesus returns, but I don't believe in a secret rapture before he returns. So maybe I have my own internal conflicts. I just find it fascinating. Well, I do wonder about if it was like the days being shorter in the sun and the moon did move in the sky faster, um, that that would cause people to... Um, and I think there's some scripture about like, the waves, the seas roaring, and if the moon has anything to do with tides, that would cause some troubles yeah, in the ocean. Um, I don't know if that's connected. Uh, I just now thought of it, so I didn't have any scripture prepared. But um, yeah, if anybody has anything to say on that, um, if those scriptures uh, fit together in that context, um, yeah, bring that up. Yeah, yeah. Um... But, you know, there's other verses, you know, that people will point to in Scripture to speak about this idea. One of them is in Second Peter, and it says here in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Do you want to read those verses? Um, oh, since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness— looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. What's the elements? I mean, I would assume <laughs> the entire earth, you know, <laughs> being burned up, the heavens. Um, but, you know, so again, I looked in commentaries and stuff about Second Peter. And again, like everything, there's lots of discussion around end times, prophecy, um, but what this idea of hastening the day of the Lord can mean. And on Second Peter, the MacArthur commentary, he notes that hastening simply means to eagerly desire. Mm -hmm. And the ESV study Bible says hastening means hurry by extra effort. And it suggests that by living holy lives, Christians can actually affect the time of the Lord's return. It says that does not mean, of course, that the Lord has not foreknown and foreordained when Jesus will return, but when God set that day, he also ordained that it would happen after all of his purposes for saving believers and building the kingdom. So their thoughts on hastening the day, and again, this is probably the more mainstream thought of hastening the day, is that, you know, as I guess the Christian faith increases that's going to draw the Lord return faster. So in a sense, it would be more shortening of days rather than length of days. Mm -hmm. I think you could yeah. think of it that way. Um, but 
I think, you know, simply because the number of days could be shortened, it doesn't necessarily mean that the days themselves could not also be shortened. You could have less days and shorter days. Uh, I don't think that's possible for sure. I uh, don't know if it's biblical, but it could be possible. And I thought something else that's at least interesting is that Earth days are actually shortening. Uh, according to timeanddate.com, hmm. uh, if you go, I saw a couple articles. According to uh, timeanddate.com, in 2020, Earth had the 28 shortest days on record. And I'll have these articles linked if you want to go read them. But the 20, or I'm sorry, the 28 shortest days since 1960. And at this time, they're expecting 2021 to be shorter hmm. than 2020. And then it just, uh, another article here, it says that Earth set a new record for the shortest day ever in 2022. And now these are not dramatic shortenings, but, you know, they're two, you know, one and a half, two milliseconds shorter. So again, nothing you would ever notice. But I did think it's interesting that time is, in fact, actually mm -hmm. shortening. And I did read an article. Again, most of these people are not super mainstream. And it is funny, like in a techno or technological age, if you go and look at somebody like just the way their website looks, you're kind of like, yeah, this person's a kook. You know, just, the website's not designed well, kook. Um, mm. So shame on me for having those type of thoughts. So I have a question. If days are shorter, so that means like sunrise and sunset is shorter, is there a difference in the moon um, rise and set as well? I have no idea. Um, they may speak about why it's shortening in the article. I didn't read the entire thing. I just kind of saw the headlines and a few of the dates and times mm -hmm. and thought, boy, that's interesting. Because if the earth is spinning faster, that would put the moon phases, that would set the moon phases off. And maybe they are changing um, a little bit. You know, I'm not sure. And maybe, maybe all the climate alarmists and stuff. I don't know. Maybe does this all tie into it together? It seems like know? this is something they would have noticed. But, um, <laughs> You know, so this guy that I read, and again, I'm not going to say that he's some somehow correct, but it was just a point that he brought up. Uh, I have no way of verifying it because I'm not a scientist, but um, he mentioned that earthquakes actually have the ability to shorten Earth time. And he came at this from a biblical uh, perspective that if there were enough earthquakes in different places or whatever, then it could increase or I mean, it could decrease and shorten the length of days. Um, Seems like it would slow it down. And I thought it was interesting because Matthew 24, 7 speaks of earthquakes. Um, Jesus prophesies and says that in those end days, you know, famines and earthquakes will be in various places. And he's saying, if that's true and earthquakes are happening everywhere, then it could, in fact, shorten the length of days. So, again, is he right or wrong? I don't From know. Scientific. Just experience. thought it was interesting. Yeah. Um, the Lord's prophesied earthquakes. They say earthquakes have a potential to shorten. Eh, thought it was interesting. Hmm. Um, now, again, I recognize on this idea, I'm probably the one that's wrong. <laughs> and the more, uh, you know, learned <laughs> men of God are probably right. But I just think it's interesting. I think it's a fun discussion to have. Yeah. Um, and, you know, maybe because time does seem to be flying by, and we all long for the return of the Lord. And we're like, ooh, maybe he is coming. Maybe. It, this is exciting. You know, when you're looking forward to something, the day seems slower. So wouldn't it seem like the closer we um, are to the Lord, you know, growing in our faith, we long for that day even more that that would cause the days to go by slow for us. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like it, waiting for Christmas, like the article said. It's like, well, waiting for Jesus to return is a lot more exciting than... <laughs> I'm just going to scroll Facebook till Jesus gets back. Um, that's probably not the right mentality. <laughs> um, but also, I just think from the idea of, you know, nothing's impossible for God. Nothing's hard for God. And, you know, we don't like to, I don't know, assume or expect the supernatural, I think, in a lot of respects. Um, but. I think the Bible paints a picture and gives us a lot of evidence that the supernatural is something we should expect. Um, this article even highlights it as we go a little bit further down. 
It says, or do you want to read that? Is uh, he who changes the times and season, uh, Daniel 2, 21, doing something supernatural in these last days. God stopped the sun and moon for 24 hours to alter a battle in Joshua 10, 12, uh, supercharged Elijah to miraculously outpace a chariot in 1 Kings 18, 46, suspended laws of nature when Jesus walked on water, walked through a wall and arrived ahead of his disciples who arrived by boat. Also, Satan knows that his time is short, Revelation 12, 12, and his end time emissary will work to wear out the saints of the Most High and plan to change times and law, Daniel 7, 25. Yeah, so hmm. we shouldn't poo-poo the idea of something supernatural happening. And obviously, as the right. end times or the time draws to an end, we're going to be seeing a lot of supernatural things. I mean, watching Christ return yeah. from the heavens. But the <laughs> answer know. to these supernatural things is probably going to be, oh, it's because of climate change. And there's going to be an alternate Aliens. reason. Yeah, there's probably going to be a fake alien invasion. I believe that, honestly. <laughs> um, but they're going to have a different reason so people don't believe scripture. Satan is going to always have an alternate answer or reason for things that are happening. So we can expect that. There's going to be a lie, but we have to look to scripture what these things mean. Is it what God said or is it some natural thing happening or whatever? Um, we need to be discerning. And we're going to look like conspiracy theorists for believing the Bible. <laughs> yes, we will. Yeah. And that's all right. Um, but, you know, so I think this is a fun story. I would love to know what you guys think on this topic. Is time shortening? Uh, and is it shortening in length of days? And does the Bible speak that it will shorten? in length of days, or is it just speaking like the more mainstream understanding is shortening a number of days? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I guess if you want to share just your idea of end times, the nearness of the end times, we're always interested. I think mm -hmm. we've made the, the claim here before that, you know, we don't claim to be, you know, anybody with sort of a, a super solid foundational grasp on end times. We're still studying and learning. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're open to discussions, open to different thoughts and ideas. And um, I just think it's uh, something because of maybe technology that is different and unique for our time that, you know, maybe we take a, a different look at it is all, I suppose. So uh, why is this important to Christians? Well, I think if time is quickening, if, rather by pace or length, if it's shortening, you know, then we could assume Christ's return is more imminent. And then even if it isn't, right, <laughs> Christ's return is still more imminent than it was yesterday, and it will be more imminent tomorrow than mm -hmm. it is today. And therefore, we need to prepare ourselves and ready our hearts. Yeah. Because if Christ is near to returning, you know, then all the stuff that we occupy our lives with, all that idleness Nikki was talking about, and if we're going to be honest with ourselves, it's idleness and occupying ourselves with things that are largely other than God. Yeah. They simply mean far less as time, you know, in Christ's return gets more imminent. And I think that exhortation from Peter in Second uh, Peter 3, where he um, says, he asks, what sort of people ought we to be? I think, boy, is that a good question and mm -hmm. something we should be pondering whether time is getting shorter, longer, whatever it happens to be. That is a question mm -hmm. we as Christians should be pondering constantly. What sort of people ought we to be? You know, should we, we uh, be what it appears many in America are? Sort of lukewarm, uh, spiritual procrastinators, if you will. Mm. Should we be agnostic people and like, well, I'll just wait and see. I'm not sure. I'm open, but I'm, you know, who knows, right? Because if time is shortening or not, you know, if the end is approaching, we really ought to be spending some time pondering what kind of people we ought to be, how we ought to live our lives, what we should be devoting our time to. All of that should be things that we really take some time. I remember a story not a story. It's not a story because it happened to me. <laughs> um, it's a story for you guys. <laughs> a coworker of mine, it was on, and I might have mentioned on this show before, but it was on one of my very first deployments. Um, might, might have been my second deployment. So I was young and 
um, you know, out in the Middle East and stuff, there's places aren't necessarily lit up the way they are here in America. I mean, there are certain cities that kind of use a little more light discipline, but we were outside in the evening, late at night, and me and another uh, coworker were kind of standing there, staring up at the stars, talking about, man, how vast that, you know, it was, and not really from a spiritual sense, um, but just how incredible it is, you know, it just goes on and on, like what's, pa- and we were kind of talking about that, and our uh, coworker came out, and she was like, what are you guys talking about? And we mentioned it. And she's like, oh, I don't talk about that. It stuff freaks me out. I'm like, what do you mean it freaks you out? It's there. You have to deal with it. And she's like, I don't even want to think about it. What about like the vastness of space? Just the vastness, the endlessness. And I think it's it what you creepy. talked about when you think about <laughs> eternity. It just, uh, just yeah. give me Facebook. I just want to scroll and forget about yeah. it. And the thought of eternity used to paralyze me with fear as a kid. Oh, yep. to think about just going on and on, like. Oh, I couldn't handle it Can't until you it. kind of understand the love of God and the desire to be with him. And then you're like, no, oh, no, that is good. Everything from God I is know. good. I had but, a moment like that as a kid too. I remember I was sleeping over at my friend Stephanie's and I was thinking about, for some reason, I was probably like seven and I was thinking about living forever and it like freaked me out and I wanted to go home. Like I didn't want to do a sleepover. It like made me so uncomfortable thinking about it. <laughs> I don't think that's an uncommon thought. And I would tell you, wrestle with it. Give yourself time to th- sit and think and freak out about it <laughs> because it is real. There is an eternity on the other side of this life and we need to decide where we're going to be for that eternity because we will be in one of two places, heaven or hell. Yeah, you got to think um, about where it's going to be. And just scrolling through Facebook isn't going to get you to heaven, <laughs> you know, at the end of it. So we ought to be pondering what kind of people we should be in. Yeah. You know, following with that, what should we do about it? I think we should take Peter's exhortation seriously. You know, we should be examining our lives and we should be adjusting them accordingly. You know, don't Mm -hmm. just examine your life and go, yep, making a lot of mistakes. What's on Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. We should be adjusting accordingly. You know, we have so many topics we can focus on. Yeah. Besides ourselves, there's something to focus on. And, Mm -hmm. you know, what benefit is there to having God's word and reading it? If we don't actually adhere to it, mm-hmm. you just read and go, boy, that's all really good stuff. Oh, well, right? You know, and again, yeah. so whether the Lord's return is imminent or not, I mean, our own personal end is, in a sense, imminent. Rather, you know, what's that, uh, the psalm, you know, the... Teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days. You know, whether you're 70 or 80, Mm -hmm. you know, the end is coming and it's going to come quickly. So whether the Lord's coming back um, or we're going to go and meet him uh, at the end of our um, short lives, you know, we ought to live in a manner that's pleasing to him. Mm -hmm. And we know what is pleasing to him because it's in the book. (laughs) He gave us a book that explains what's pleasing to him. So we should be reading it and adjusting our lives to it. Um, and then how should we pray about it? Because Christians should pray about everything. I think we should pray that God would reveal to you the desires of your heart and also the waywardness of your heart. You know, and then pray a prayer of repentance and a prayer of faith to live as we ought to, um, again, regardless if Jesus comes back tomorrow or if you live to a ripe old age and you die peacefully. It doesn't matter. Your life should be marked by repentance and faith and belief in God um, and longing and looking forward forward to his return hmm. to meet him. So um, do you have any final thoughts on this discussion of length of days, shortening or quickening of time um, or pace? I think, I know just for me, like I can stop and reflect on my life. Um, on, on being a um, what sort of person we should be, you know, thinking that. And just think on that in regards to the people who are in your life, maybe the things God has given you, um, your responsibilities, your job, your home. You could even just think about like two um, parts of your life to say, well, God has given me a house. Um, and I don't take very good care of it, whether you have kids or not. Just be like, all right, what sort of person should I be in this regards? I'm going to um, focus on taking care of this. Um, whatever it is, fixing things up or cleaning or just, um, or if it's a relationship, think about one person in your life that maybe you need to mend a relationship with. 
you can think in these small, like practical ways. You don't have to look at it as like a whole and as overwhelming, like, and ask God to show you what things to focus on. Like with me, like I was praying, God convict me where I need conviction. Like something's got to change in my life and it can't just be me motivating myself. I was motivated by the scriptures. They convicted me. It didn't stir up from within myself. It was from the word of God that brought, that spurred me on. Um, it was like I knew my sin. I knew I had a fault, but I had no motivation, nothing really spurring me on. Um, I know that sounds horrible, but that really is like the truth. God's word is what just like wakes us up and motivates us. We can know the truth of something and still like be unable to perform like the right thing. So number one, yeah, pray about it. Like you said, pray about it and and read God's word because it's going to be what motivates you, what gets you doing the thing that you know you're supposed to do. Um, yeah, that's the kind of person we ought to be is a person in the word first, um, praying and in the word, and then everything else is going to flow out of that. So that what Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. Um, you can't really do that in the flesh. <laughs> so um, yeah, just ask God for help. Absolutely, we should. And um, again, we'd love to know your guys' thoughts on this. Um, it might be a, a topic that is idiotic and makes no sense, but either way, let me know. It's still fun to discuss. <laughs> so, it's not wrong. It's yeah. Yeah. So just it's a good topic. Something I thought was interesting when I heard it a decade ago. I'm still interested. Is probably even more interested as technology seems to quicken our lives more and more. So. Mm-hmm.